welcome everyone to uh, my presentation today. Uh, my name is Sashi Sitambaram. I'm a technical solution specialist here with CAD Dimensions. Um, and today I'm going to present uh, on effectively designing, testing and manufacturing plastic parts. So I wanted to uh, thank everybody for taking some time out of your lunch today to join me. Uh, and hopefully you will uh, gather some more information if not already about our uh, SOLIDWORKS plastic um, add-in to SOLIDWORKS. So uh, for today's session, um, I'm going to go through the entire session with a, with a, a live demo. And um, I would uh, uh, hope to keep the questions towards the end of this presentation. So uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please write it down. And at the end of this presentation, I will open up the floor for questions and you'll be able to type it in and, and ask the questions and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at about uh, um, anywhere between uh, 40 minutes to 45 minutes for this presentation today. All right, so uh, the agenda for today is that uh, I'm going to start with just a, a basic uh, understanding on how parts, how plastic parts are, are being designed today. Um, these may not be how you are currently designing plastic parts or building plastic parts, uh, but this is a general understanding of how it's currently being built and uh, ways that, that we feel could enhance that, uh, that process. Uh, then I will move on to the plastic standard uh, product description and capabilities. Um, so when it comes to SOLIDWORKS plastic, we do have three versions to them, uh, the plastic standard, uh, uh, professional, and premium, just like every other uh, software suite that we have in SOLIDWORKS. Um, and uh, the, the major uh, part of this presentation will focus on plastic standards. And towards the end of this presentation, I will talk a little bit more about what we have to offer in uh, professional and premium version as well. Um, I will be uh, also, as I had mentioned, I'll be demonstrating uh, the SOLIDWORKS Plastic, uh, a live demo, and uh, we, we will uh, <clears throat> summarize the presentation with um, all the different modules that are included within SOLIDWORKS Plastics and uh, end the presentation with uh, Q&A. All right, so new way for uh, plastic part design. Essentially, what we feel would be uh, the best way to, to design your, your plastic parts. Um, in, in today's world, um, from what we've seen a lot of times, uh, when it comes to plastic design, typically the, the part is designed um, and then the mold, the, the plastic part is designed and the mold is designed around the plastic part. Um, the mold is then built, uh, put into uh, production and uh, you start creating perhaps some prototypes out of the mold, the original mold builds, and you identify any part defects, your plastic part defects, and uh, you go back to the drawing board and see if there's any part design that needs to be changed to enhance the, the, uh, the part itself, or even the mold might change. Um, a lot of times I know that the angle in which the, the mold, uh, the, the draft angle within the mold itself for the part to to slide out correctly, uh, perhaps if there's any cutouts within the, the molds to create holes for your plastic parts, these typically tend to change uh, when it comes to building molds. Um, a lot of times if the part, uh, uh, if, there's a, is a, if there's a major part defect in terms of strength or, or structural build, then maybe an in-depth simulation might be, might be performed um, and typically this is sent out uh, uh, you know, to a third-party company or outsourced uh, to companies that do uh, uh, consulting for simulation, which typically can be very expensive. Um, so problems are fixed after the fact. This is costly and inefficient. Um, so this graph really shows, uh, really translates what I just explained, where um, this is a, a, a typical timeline of a product development for plastic parts. You design the part, you design the mold, the mold is manufactured, part is uh, 
production of the part, product is launched. Uh, and this, uh, the orange graph, uh, really signifies the, the cost involved uh, when having to change, uh, make changes to that part or the mold. So at, at an early stage, when, when the part is designed, so if you're using SolidWorks and, and building these 3D parts, um, how much does it really cost you to make changes at that point? It's probably extremely low because everything is done virtually at that point. Uh, you can make changes rapidly. SolidWorks is very good at, at uh, revision control. So you'll be able to make changes quickly. And you'll also be able to design the mold within SolidWorks and make the changes for your mold design um, within within this time frame for, for very low cost. Now, um, the only the only thing that you'll be paying for here is the is the time involved in making that change. However, as you pass that manufacturing stage where, where the mold is already manufactured and the part is produced, now you're talking about hardware. You're having to make actual changes to the mold, and sometimes the mold has to be completely scrapped and rebuilt. Um, so as you can see, as we as we go down the uh, product development cycle, the cost is actually uh, rising. Um, so, with with uh, with the old way one, as we've seen, simulation was done at the end. Uh, a lot of companies are starting to adapt, uh, starting to see the importance of running simulation. So, so they they start to see uh, um, a benefit in running simulation before the mold is built. Um, this can be useful. But it's also very limited because a lot of times the part is designed, uh, the part in the mold is designed by two very different people. Sometimes not even the same company does it. Your company might design the part. You might send it off to your mold maker who then designs the mold. He sends you back the part and then you run in-depth simulation for the, the mold and the part. Now, in terms of um, having these uh, uh, this type of cycle, the time involved might increase uh, having to go back and forth with your mold designer. Every time you make a change uh, to the part or to the mold, they are charging you for that change. Um, so again, it is, it is great that simulation is being used early on in the process, but still it's very limited, and there can be hidden costs due to lack of optimization. So... Over, over this time period, right, um, plastic production has been around for, for many, many years, hundreds of years, um, relevant since the 1940s, since World War II. Um, the, the product design cycle has, has changed over the years, and uh, uh, in-depth simulation is, is starting to be used. And what we have seen in... in um, recent times, the best way to optimize your model and, and build the right part and the mold is to actually run simulation from, from the get-go, from the beginning. This gives you the ability to make part changes efficiently uh, and make mold design changes. Uh, even if you're not the mold designer, you can make, you can build a mold, you can create the mold, you can give that information to the mold maker make sure that he doesn't create uh, or introduce any kind of issues or problems. So um, this essentially helps, speeds up your, your manufacturing time, and essentially uh, when you save time, you save money. So, so in terms of SolidWorks Plastic, the, the positioning statement that we have is that uh, you want to be able to uh, predict and avoid manufacturing defects early on in, in, in the manufacturing stage. Um, and this essentially eliminates costs of mold reworks, uh, which can be very expensive, uh, improving part quality and decreasing time to market. Now, if you have that extra money now, uh, and a lot of times companies are already putting aside money for mold rework because it's so, uh, uh, it's done quite quite a bit. It's, it's, it's almost a, an unavoidable, uh, now that money can now be dispersed into other areas uh, using for innovation, designing better parts. Um, our value proposition for SolidWorks Plastic is that 
80% of plastic parts are injection molded. Uh, SolidWorks plastic was built uh, specifically for injection molding. So if you are running injection molding or if you are designing parts which are eventually going to be injection molded, then SolidWorks plastic would be the best fit uh, for you. Uh, injection molding can be complex, uh, mix of time, temperature, pressure, material and tooling variables. Um, so SolidWorks Plastic again gives you uh, the ability to put together all these parameters and evaluate how all these par parameters work together. Um, so it's not just the pressure uh, of the of the of the uh, plastic going into your part. Um, it's not just the fill time. It's not just the the temperature. It's all these parameters that work together, and you need to be able to evaluate that. And SolidWorks Plastic gives you that type of information early on in the process. Um, and injection, and, and as, as I said before, injection molds uh, range in cost from anywhere from ten thousand to a million dollars, depending on the size of the part. And uh, just imagine having to rework a, a, a mold, which is a couple of hundred thousand dollars. It is going to be a significant cost. Um, and really, based on the price of SolidWorks plastic, even if you can save just one round of mold rework, uh, if you can eliminate one round of mold rework, uh, you're, you're pretty much paying for, for the software. And this is software that you own in-house that you can use over time and use for many, many more other projects uh, that will come along your way. All right, so, so uh, the key capabilities is, uh, for one, extensive database of plastic material. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this when I do the live demo. We, we'll actually see um, the, uh, uh, the database that we have is, uh, it's, it's, it's very in-depth. Uh, comprehensive range of analysis capabilities and results. Um, as I mentioned before, it gives you many different parameters that you can evaluate and ensure that you have the best plastic part. Um, guided analysis setup, uh, essentially um, this software was built keeping in mind that it's being going to be used by plastic part designers and mold makers. It wasn't designed for your uh, K or you know uh, FEA specialist or your PhD specialist. Uh, it is uh, very intuitive. The user, user interface is very easy to use, as you will see in the demo today. Um, and what differentiates us from our competitors? Well, for one, it's SolidWorks integrated. So when you have the ability to make quick changes to your geometry and uh, also create multiple versions of the same part, you might want to test a plastic part with two or three different cutouts uh, maybe different sizes, different wall thickness, uh, different structural integrity. Probably you want to add some ribs to that, uh, to the walls to, to add some strength. You'll be able to create all those configurations and test them right within SolidWorks individually, um, all within the same user interface. Um, it is easy to learn and use. As I said, it was built, uh, keeping in mind that it is for your your uh, plastic uh, makers, your plastic designers. Uh, and again, it is fast and accurate. This uh, uh, SolidWorks plastic uh, was originally, it was originally uh, spawned from uh, another uh, plastic uh, software, which was simple and uh, it, that has been used many, many years and it has been proven in the industry that it gives accurate results very, very close to actual uh, uh, prototype results. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, um, the focus of this presentation is going to be on the plastic standard, and I will I will touch a little bit more about what is included in the plastic professional and premium towards the end of this presentation. So just to start, uh, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about what's included with plastic standard and. Uh, we will see a lot of these tools that I'm going to talk about in the demonstration that I will, that I will conduct uh, right after this. Uh, so you will see that to, to really um, show you what it is capable of, um, there are three questions that I would hope every mold maker or plastic designer 
uh, would ask themselves when they're building the plastic part. Will my part fail? Where are the well lines? Will there be air traps? Uh, and the answer is um, yes. Um, and yes to will my part fail? Yes, you will be able to identify the well lines. And yes, you will be able to identify the air traps. These three functionalities are essentially the basics of SOLIDWORKS standards. You'll easily be able to identify these three parameters uh, using plastic standard. Um, besides these three parameters, you'll also be able to uh, determine best gate locations uh, as to where the, the polymer moves into the mold to create the plastic part. Uh, and uh, also help you optimize your part design to get the best part, get the best plastic part for designing the, the actual mold itself. Um, so just to uh, take a look closer at what's involved with plastic standard, um, I do have this chart here that shows us all the different modules that are, that are uh, involved with plastic standards. Again, Plastic Professional and uh, Plastic Premium, uh, it's all here as well. Um, and the way SOLIDWORKS has identified the three levels is the first level, Plastic Standard, is your fill. So will my part fill? Uh, is there any problems with being able to fill uh, and create the plastic part itself? And then the next level is your fill and pack. How you're packing the part, uh, essentially what goes around your plastic, your plastic part. So a lot of the, the mold information, the mold parameters is involved in this uh, level here. And uh, last but not least uh, is the warp and cool for your premium level where you can see after the part has been uh, created what uh, some of the uh, warp that's involved with your part uh, as well as uh, cooling. So uh, what, what kind of cooling uh, is required and uh, the temperatures that are involved with your with your cooling of your uh, plastic parts. So uh, when it comes to plastic standard, uh, the the biggest uh, uh, criteria here is to fill. So I hope this is you know coming across uh, looks good on your side. You can see how uh, here is just a quick video of of uh, showing us how. Uh, the part is being filled with the with the plastic, um, so you'll be able to clearly see this, uh, and you'll be able to see how the plastic distributes within your within your mold. Um, you'll be also able to identify any problems early on with your with your plastic part. So here uh, we have a phenomenon called short shots. Essentially, what's happening here is that the part has a very thin wall. And uh, the, the pressure that's being used to pump the, uh, the, the plastic in is not enough. So um, as the plastic is moving, it starts to solidify and essentially stops the flow of the plastic uh, flowing through, through the mold. Um, you'll be able to identify well lines. So here's a very good example. Uh, where you have a lot of holes. So well lines is, is uh, particularly uh, apparent when you have uh, many holes in your part. So uh, structurally, uh, if you have well lines, it's, it's not a good thing. It can probably uh, cause uh, it to crack or break easily. So we want to avoid well lines as much as possible. So we'll be able to identify well lines easily using SOLIDWORKS plastic standard. Uh, moving along, uh, besides uh, well lines, air traps is also uh, a very big uh, criteria uh, when it comes to uh, designing uh, your plastic parts and identifying where the best gate location would be. Uh, if your plastic were to have a circular motion, it might trap air within the within the mold, and uh, this will be a air pocket. Essentially, no material will be in that area. And uh, structurally, it, it will not be very strong. It can cause defects. It could sink inside and cause problems. And uh, you also would be able to uh, evaluate multiple gates within your 
uh, plastic part. So you can see in this example, I have two gates here, and it clearly shows me how the plastic is, uh, how the polymer is flowing into the mold and, and creating that, that plastic part for me. Um, and you can actually take this a step further uh, when you have multiple gates like this. Um, and you can actually show the distribution of each gate. So in this case, uh, you can see that we have actually a pretty good distribution, almost 50-50 for each gate. Um, and if this is not the case, then you might have to modify your part or maybe modify the gate location so that you have a better distribution of, of that uh, uh, polymer flowing into the, the mold. All right. So... Um, that is uh, some of the uh, capabilities that are uh, included with uh, Plastic Standard. And uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at a quick demonstration right within SolidWorks itself on um, uh, creating a, a plastic part and uh, running some analysis on it. So here I have a, a smoker bomb assembly. Uh, a lot of plastic parts involved here and uh, what we are really going to be analyzing in this uh, in this example is this cover uh, this plastic part cover right here so I'm just going to uh, just open that part up You can see that uh, this plastic part here has uh, has, it, has your typical uh, 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 plastic part uh, uh, properties. You have your ribs, um, very thin walls, um, as well as some some vents here. Now this is the smoke alarm, so uh, it almost works as uh, two ways. It it's a, a speaker and also a, a vent, so the smoke can travel in and out of this smoke detector, right, so you can detect the actual smoke uh, going in and out of it. Um, and uh, um, if I was a plastic designer, I would uh, almost, uh, you know, you, uh, reconsider um, uh, these types of uh, these types of pro uh, uh, geometry, very thin and long uh, geometry. So we need to focus uh, our analysis on these types of uh, geometry, ensure that uh, when we do create our uh, plastic part, um, you will not have any kind of problems with these types of geometry. So uh, to uh, invoke or, or start up uh, SolidWorks Plastics right within uh, SolidWorks, you can just go right into the SolidWorks add-in, and you will see SolidWorks Plastic right there. You click on it, uh, you can see it's very fast. It brings up the SolidWorks tab, SolidWorks Plastic tab, uh, where you have the uh, access to most of the tools. We'll also be able to access all the, uh, the plastic tools right within the tools option up here as well. And uh, you will get a tab um, right on your feature manager, which gives you access to that, uh, that analysis, the, the, what we call a design study tree. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to uh, creating your analysis, the first step is to always uh, start with your mesh. Uh, essentially, this uh, breaks down your part uh, into smaller uh, uh, bits and pieces, essentially, to, to be able to evaluate on an average base uh, for all the different uh, elements and nodes that you have in your part. Um, I actually have a very good picture of it uh, in my, my PowerPoint. You can see here uh, some of my mesh. So you have your surface and solid meshing in Plastic Standard and this is essentially how it looks uh, when you have a, a triangular shell mesh. Uh, you can see a lot of triang triangle and when you have a solid mesh it's a hexahedral mesh such as this. Right, so um, to create your mesh within SolidWorks Plastic, simply right-click the mesh. In this case, we're going to create a shell mesh, uh, and I say manual. Uh, 
we can actually uncheck this export uh, solid data for warp analysis. We're not doing any kind of warp analysis in this example, so I can uncheck this and say next. And at this stage, SolidWorks Plastic is actually evaluating your geometry and uh, it is going to create uh, some default numbers for that mesh. So it, at, le at least it gives you a starting point. It gives you uh, an, uh, uh, an approximation of what will be a healthy mesh for your part. So at this point, it, it has uh, identified the, uh, the geometry and I can say uh, next. And at this point, I can actually specify the size of that triangular mesh that I, that I talked about. So the, the software itself has identified that 2.0836 millimeters would be a, a good number for this, uh, for this geometry. Um, it does create a, quite a bit of uh, triangle, uh, triangle numbers. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm actually gonna bump this up, uh, make it uh, fairly larger for time's sake, so we can quickly evaluate this. As the uh, less triangles we have, uh, the faster it will it will uh, produce results for us. Uh, when it comes to local refinement, um, we can also set this to auto. Essentially what this does um, is that it will evaluate areas with smaller geometry and automatically refine the geometry, uh, the mesh there. So such as uh, these ribs here might have uh, some smaller geometry. Uh, this area right here might have a smaller geometry. So it will automatically refine the mesh in that area and give you a better mesh. Um, and you'll be able to see this right away. So as soon as I'm set uh, with all my properties here, I say mesh. Um, you can see that uh, for the general layout, I have my mesh parameter. Um, and uh, which is the actual size I set. And for areas such as this, where we have this keyhole here, the, the mesh is, is significantly smaller. Uh, and that's again, is your, is your refinement. You can see here, it's also refined. Okay. Um, so again, um, if you're not happy with the mesh, you can always change the parameters and just hit mesh again. So how fast and quick it was to actually create the mesh for us. Um, I'm actually happy with this mesh right here, so I'm gonna hit next. And um, this is where the software will give you a, a summary of your mesh to basically show you the health of your mesh. Essentially to say that my part is waterproof, that's a great, uh, a great thing, uh, especially if you have plastic which is flowing through in a liquid form, flowing through the, the mold, it has to be waterproof, um, non-manifold geometry, I do have some, some bad elements and very bad elements, in this case, very low percentage. However, this type of uh, percentage can be rectified very easily by creating a smaller mesh. So as, as I had mentioned, uh, software had uh, set a default mesh to about two millimeters and I bumped it up to four. So if I had uh, used that two, I would have probably got zero percent for, for bad elements. In this case, it's not bad. Uh, very, still very low, so I should be able to still perform my analysis without any problems. I'll hit the green check mark. Um, in this window right here, um, it uh, essentially allows me to make any changes to the existing mesh that I have, um, where I can perhaps add some nodes. So if I want to break up some of these elements into smaller elements manually, I can do that using some of these tools as well or I can even uh, combine or merge some of these nodes, which is uh, such as this right here, where I can create uh, uh, less nodes and combine elements. Uh, I'm not really gonna make any changes at this point, and I can just hit the green check mark. And at this point, once I have a mesh to work with is when SolidWorks Plastics will give me the options to specify the properties that's gonna go into my, uh, my plastic part here. So essentially, to be able to run an analysis with plastic, with SolidWorks Plastic, you really need uh, three parameters. Your shell, uh, sorry, your mesh, your material, and your, in, your injection location, which essentially is the gate location. As long as you have these three parameters set, you'll be able to run your analysis and get results that you can that you can look at. Um, 
So let's just go down the list and talk about some of these parameters that we have here and I'll run the analysis and we can take a look at some of our results. So when it comes to material, as I mentioned before, um, SolidWorks has quite the database. So I just right click polymer, select database. Um, we have um, quite a bit of thermoplastics and thermosets uh, material. Uh, and we have well over 5,000 materials in this database. Uh, so we can actually sort it by uh, polymer type, so ABS or PC or EPD, uh, EPDM. Uh, it's all here. Or you can even sort it by company. Uh, we have easily about uh, over 200 companies in here. So if you are currently buying plastic from a company, uh, you might actually find it right here within this list. So all the big players are here. So you can see 3M, uh, Asahi, uh, BP Chemical. Uh, most of them are, are in here. DuPont is in here as well. And um, it doesn't really end there. You can also um, create a user-defined database. So if you are using a plastic material that is not in this database, um, you can actually create your own plastic material as long as you have all the uh, parameters involved. So if you have the melt temperature, the, the mold temperature, the, uh, the yeah, ejection temperature, all these types of parameters, you'll be able to create your own uh, database as well. Um, so as, I, uh, as you know, the, the database is, is, is huge. Uh, so you can also find or search for a type of material as well. So if you're dealing with uh, some specific uh, um, plastic material, polymer material, so for instance, if it's a polycarbonate uh, or something like that, you just type it in here and find it, and it will find all the different uh, ones within this database. So very easy to access and quite a bit of material to work with. For this example, I'm actually going to use a, a PC uh, and uh, I'm just going to use a generic material that we have in our database. So not, nothing specific here. And I'm going to say OK. And that sets the material for the part. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, what we call the mole uh, material as well. So I can actually open this database. And you'll see that uh, we have quite a bit of material for mold um, as well. So this really plays a, a big part when you're dealing with uh, your, your pack uh, option. So the, the pack and the fill and pack. So that the second level, uh, when you specify a, a material for this, um, you can get you know, shrinkage information, uh, temperature, um, you know, cooling, temp cooling uh, temperature, which we'll, we'll take a look at some of those examples later on. So again, we're not going to set a, a mold material for this example uh, because we're just looking at the fill. Uh, however, I just wanted to show you that the uh, option is there to add that material. Uh, moving on, you also have process parameter. Uh, in this case, we have the uh, settings for fill, pack, and warp. So again, your uh, standard, professional, and premium levels. Uh, in this case, as you can guess, you're only going to take a look at the fill settings in this case. So as I open up the settings, you'll actually see that most of these parameters are already filled in. These come in default based on the your geometry, the material you've set. Um, SolidWorks uh, plastics will fill in these information. Feel free to change it if you need to. If you have this information, you can change it. You can change the filling time if you need to. Uncheck auto and you can change that, that filling time as well. Uh, in this case, it's predicted that it's gonna take about 2.07 seconds to fill and uh, uh, for this plastic part. And if you look under your advanced options, you can actually uh, even specify a, a machine database for, uh, for your uh, fill settings. Essentially what this is, is it will give you your injection molding machine uh, database so you can actually pick uh, some of the different machines that you may have in your facility if you are a mold maker. Um, just keep in mind this doesn't really affect the analysis in any way. It's only for a reference 
So perhaps if you want to create a, 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 a some sort of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, perhaps like a summary report to send to someone, or if you want to save that information to, to, to send it over to someone else, you can, and they'll be able to identify what type of machine you're using for for that for that injection molding process. So the next thing that's uh, extremely uh, important for this analysis is your boundary conditions. Essentially, you're going to set the um, injection location or the gate location, we call it. So to set that, you can uh, right click and say open settings. And um, what we have here is uh, you can specify uh, an injection location based on the nodes so if you were to click anywhere on your part, it will pick up the closest node, that mesh node, and place a, a gate at that point. Um, you can ask the software to add an injection location automatically. So if I were to select on this, it ask for one, two, three, how, how many gates you would like to apply to your part. Uh, in this case, if I say one, you can see that uh, it actually added the gate right there in the middle, which is probably not a good idea in, in real life scenario. Um, and uh, what it what it really is doing is it's it's picking up the central location of your part and it's dropping the gate location right there. Uh, so what this really allows you to do is at least get a rough idea of the best place for the plastic distribution. Um, this might not be the best place for a gate, but in terms of how the plastic might flow to the part, this uh, somewhere along this axis might be a good idea. Um, so, so as we uh, as we have uh, identified, this is not a good good place. So I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to actually select a spot up here, right in the middle, which might be a, a, a better uh, better location. And once I've identified that uh, that location, I can add the injection location, selecting this. And once I've selected that gate location, I can actually uh, predict a flow pattern. So if I select this, it actually gives me uh, some predicted inform prediction information. Um, this is a unitless uh, uh, unitless uh, parameter but it gives some idea of how the uh, plastic will flow and also uh, your uh, how easy it is for the plastic to flow to to through your to your mold here uh, you can as you can see clearly the plastic is much easier to to enter in this location as it comes to the end it gets a little bit harder and difficult um, this is a great tool especially if you have multiple gates so uh, let's say if I were to add a second gate here and select the uh, flow pattern, you can see now this area is blue, which means which signifies easier flow, and uh, these areas are now uh, uh, yellow in the middle where the plastic would eventually end. All right, I'm actually going to delete that uh, second uh, gate location. And go ahead and uh, say OK there. And now I'm actually ready to run my analysis. So I'm going to simply uh, right click this and say run. And as you can see, um, as I'm running my analysis, um, I actually have an option here to display partial results as the, uh, the analysis is taking place. You can actually see the uh, the the plastic flowing through your part as the result is solving, and this is really good because um, you'll be if you are able to identify some problems as it's solving, you don't really have to wait till it completely ends. Um, you can actually suspend the result at any point and take a look at uh, what you have. Uh, accomplished so far in terms of the, the results. So in this case, um, if you take a look closer here, give it about 50 or 60 percent, 
we're actually starting to identify some problem areas here. You can see that the plastic is actually uh, creating kind of a circular motion. And uh, as it fills in here, you're going to start to see well lines right there, or, or even air traps. So, so if I were to say suspend this, uh, this analysis right now, so basically I paused it, I can actually rerun a quick animation from the beginning to see what's going on there. And if I'm not happy with this, I can uh, completely stop the analysis at this point. Um, in this case, I'm actually just going to resume it just so that uh, we can see the well lines that I'm talking about and even the air traps. Just a few more minutes here. And the uh, analysis has completed. It's calculating the well lines. And uh, in terms of results, um, I can actually close this out. And now we can easily see all the different results we have uh, in terms of fill time, pressure, um, shear rate at the end of the fill, uh, cooling time. Um, and as I had mentioned before, the well lines, as soon as you select that, it will show you all the well lines within your part and as well as air traps. So you can see that here, right here, we have an air trap right in the middle, which is uh, uh, extremely dangerous to have uh, within your plastic part. Uh, in terms of results, uh, SolidWorks Plastics also gives you a results advisor. So uh, it will let you know that the plastic can be filled with a green light. Even though there is problems, it can be filled. Um, and um, as you hover through all the different results here, it will give you some information on the results. And as you scroll down, it will even give you some recommendations on how to get uh, better results. In this case, repositioning that uh, um, the gate might help, or um, even if we um, probably uh, reduce the thickness here, it might help as well. So. Um, I actually have some other configurations that we could take a look at. So one configuration I have here is a, a thinner wall. And uh, if you look at the results that we have for that thinner wall, um, we actually get a, the, the phenomenon that I talked about earlier where we have the short shots, essentially very thin wall with low pressure. And uh, if you take a look at Another example I have here where I've thickened up the wall a little bit, so kind of a middle ground, and actually changed the gate location to this point right here where the plastic now folds in this direction, flows in that direction. Um, you can actually see that I've reduced the well lines significantly um, as opposed to earlier where all these had well lines. So, this allows you to design your part uh, and get you to, to the best part that you can have. And you can even share information like this with your mold maker. So in terms of air traps, you can see that I've actually removed all the air traps here. And most of the air traps are, are within the end points of my, of my parts, which typically you can, you can remove using vents or injector pins. All right. So, um, I'm almost uh, almost out of time here, so I'm going to uh, go over some of the the uh, last parts of my presentation, um, just to show you what's what's uh, included with Plastic Professional and Plastic Premium. We can actually look at some of the examples we have here. Uh, so for one, uh, multi-cavity 
being able to actually design that gate uh, and it will it will evaluate how much material needs to flow to each of your uh, uh, different cavity. Uh, again, as I had mentioned before, when you're dealing with the mold, you can put in some of that uh, mold uh, information. Now you can uh, evaluate your even your cooling time. And uh, rather than looking at it uh, uh, virtually, you can even look at look at it graphically. Uh, you can see that. Uh, it has identified some of the nodes here, showing you that glass transition um, uh, point within the within the within the temperature for the polymer, and uh, the change in temperature for that uh, the mold itself, the pack. Uh, we can see it right here. Um, in terms of uh, plastic, the, the the warped tool is is great. You can see a quick animation of uh, evaluating warp. Um, so SolidWorks Plastic Premium will, will be able to give you this type of uh, information. So uh, essentially to, to summarize, uh, SolidWorks Plastic uh, allows you to, to evaluate your, your plastic parts in on the very early stage virtually before you start manufacturing your parts. Uh, you can predict and avoid injection molding, uh, manufacturing defects, uh, reduce or eliminate uh, mold uh, rework costs altogether, uh, improve part quality. You'll be able to now use that cash flow that you have put aside for your mold rework for innovating better parts, and again, decreasing time to market altogether by running simulation early on in the process. Um, so. Before we uh, kind of wrap this up for questions, I just wanted everyone to know that we're actually running a June promotion right now where if you buy SolidWorks Premium, you actually get SolidWorks Plastic Standard for free. This is a, a seven dollars $8,000 value, uh, which is going on right now. Uh, so again, if you, if you buy SolidWorks Premium, which is our best version of SolidWorks, you can actually get a free seat of uh, Plastic Standard. Everything that you saw today in my demonstration is included in that. Uh, so if you want to find out more about plastic, please email me. That's my email right there, uh, sashi at catdimensions.com. You can call us. Uh, as soon as you call us, anybody will be more than happy to help you. Um, and you can also visit our website to get a hold of us. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.